Hello all, uh, Brian Lynch here. Um, Paul Briscoe has very kindly asked me to do a few songs as a mystery guest uh, for the concert event. Um, so uh, I do my thing unaccompanied and I'm acutely aware that holding your attention digitally is a different uh, kettle of fish from doing it standing live in front of people um, in, in an actual physical concert. So just to let you know what this segment consists of, there are three songs in here. One's about three minutes long, one's about four minutes long, and one's about eight minutes long. Uh, the first one is a uh, humorous, I hope, uh, take on the plot of Hamlet by William Shakespeare, the entire plot in one song. Uh, the middle one is a traditional um, folk song. And the final one is Johnny Cash's A Boy Named Sue, uh, albeit with a little bit of a Scottish twist on it. So hopefully something in there for everybody. Um, there's a little short introduction for each song, again just to give you a little bit of context. So if you find yourself in the middle of one of those songs and you're thinking, can't be bothered with this, feel free to wind forward a wee bit and, uh, and try out the next one. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoy the set. And uh, the first song is uh, Our Hamlet by Adam McNaughton who is a Scottish singer-songwriter. He was also an English teacher in Glasgow, something of a contradiction in terms, south of the border perhaps, but um, he knows how to craft his words and he certainly knows his Shakespeare. So, first song is Our Hamlet. The his king was sitting in his garden all alone when his brother dropped into his ear a wee dodo in bane. Then he nicked his crown and his money and his widow. But the dead king walked and got his son and said, Hey, listen, kiddo, I've been killed and it's your duty to take revenge on Claudius. So kill him quick and clean and show the nation what a fraud he is. The kid said, Right, I'll do it, but I'll have to play it crafty so as nobody will suspect me. I'll kid on that I'm a dafty. So, to all but her issue, his devoted, trusted friend, Hamlet, that's the boy, kids on his round the bend, and because he was near ready for obligatory killing, he persuades the king, his uncle, that he's taught himself the shilling, took the mickey out Polonius, treated poor Ophelia vile, told Rosencrantz and Guildenstern that Denmark was a jail, then a troop of travelling actors, like 784, turned up today a special one-night gig in Sunday Elsinore. Hamlet, Hamlet, loved his mammy. Hamlet, Hamlet, acting by me. Hamlet, Hamlet, hesitating. No wonders if the ghost will cheat him. That is why he's waiting. So then Hamlet writes a scene for the players to enact. Well, Horatio and him will watch to see if Claudius cracks. The play was called The Mousetrap. No, the one that's running new. And sure enough, the king walked out before the play was through. Now Hamlet's got the proof that Claudius Giddy's dad a fatal dose. The only problem being now that Claudius knows that Hamlet knows when Hamlet tells his mammy her new husband's no a fit one. Uncle Claude takes out a contract with the English king as hitman. So... When Hamlet stabbed Polonius, the concealed corpus delicti was the king's excuse to send him for an English hemp and necktie with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to make sure he got there. Ah, but Hamlet jumped the boat and put the finger on that pair. Meanwhile, the artist heard his dad had been stabbed through the arras. He came racing back to Elsinore, hot foot to sweet feet Paris. Well, Ophelia, we are dad killed by the man she was to marry. After saying it would flower, she committed Harry Carr. <laughs> Hamlet, Hamlet, Oni Mason, Hamlet, Hamlet, learned his lesson. Hamlet, Hamlet, alas, poor Yorick's curse has convinced him that men, good or bad, must finally come to dust. So then Laertes lost a place and was demanding retribution but the king said keep the heed and I'll provide you a solution he then arranged a sword fight for the interested parties with a blunted sword for Hamlet and a sharp one for Laertes to make things double certain the old belt embraces line he fixed a poison sword to pound a poison cup of wine the poison sword got Hamlet but Laertes went and muffed it cause he got stabbed himself and then confessed a he snuffed it. 
And then Hamlet's mammy drunk the wine, and as her face was dumb and blue, Hamlet said, I do believe the king's a baddie new. Incestuous murderous damn the Dane, he said to be precise, then made up for hesitating by killing Claudius twice. As he stabbed him with the sword and for the wine between his lips, he cried, The rest is silence, that was Hamlet had his chips. They fired a volley o'er him, they shook the topmost rafter, then fought in brass night deep in Danes, left happy ever after. Hamlet, Hamlet, oh it's gory, Hamlet, Hamlet, end of story, Hamlet, Hamlet, I'm away. If you think that that was boring, well, you should read the play. So uh, feel free to pass that one on to anyone who has Hamlet as their prescribed text in their GCSEs or um, A-levels this year. All they have to do is spend six months learning the words to that song and uh, you've got an instant cheat. So um, shh, just between us, hey. The next song is a Scottish traditional song. Um, I think the Irish sometimes claim it as well, but I know it as a Scottish song. Uh, from the singing of the Corries. I was a big Corries fan in my younger days. Um, so this is The Road to Dundee. Cold winter was howling o'er moor and o'er mountain Wild was the surge o'er the dark rolling sea When I met about daybreak A bonny wee lassie Who asked me the road and the miles to Dundee Says I, my young lassie, I can a wheel tell ye the road and the distance I can a wheel gee. But if ye'll permit me to gan a wee bit, I'll show ye the road and the miles to Dundee. At once she consented and gave me her arm. Ne'er a word did I spear as what the lassie might be. She appeared like an angel in feature and form. As she walked by my side on the road to Dundee. At length, with a howl of Strathmartin behind us, and the spires o' the tune in full view we could see, she said, Jen. Gentle sir, I ne'er will forget ye for showing me so far on the road to Dundee. I took the gout pen frae the clasp on my bosom. And I said, keep ye this in remembrance o me. And bravely I kissed the sweet lips o the lassie as I parted with her on the road to Dundee. So he to the lassie I ne'er will forget her and the little young laddie was listening to me and never be sweeter 
take envoy a young lassie, though it's only to show her the road to To give you some context for this uh, final song, <clears throat> we need to go back into the mists of history, back to the year 1 BC, which as we all know stands for before Covid. And you can sometimes hear the year 1 BC still referred to by professional historians um, by its original title of uh, 2019. And so way back then <clears throat> the world was a very different place. And uh, believe it or not, I was actually able to travel up to Otley. You'll never believe this. <laughs> I was actually able to travel up to Otley uh, for the weekend of the annual folk festival. And on the Thursday before the weekend, we went along to Otters Lee and we sang a few songs, one of which was Johnny Cash's A Boy Named Sue. And uh, on the evening, I felt obliged to sing uh, that song in a quite bad a uh, pseudo American accent uh, because it's about cowboys, it's set in the Wild West and it's a Johnny Cash song. So um, I felt that uh, it wasn't possible to perform that song in a Scottish accent. However, since then I've had a wee think and I've come to realise that you can perform it in a Scottish accent. You just have to come at it from the right angle. So from the Wild West of Scotland this is a boy called Sue. My dad, he left home when I was three and he didn't leave much for my mum and me. Just this old guitar and somewhat inexplicably an empty bottle of booze. Still get no idea what that was all about. Anyways, I don't really mind that he cut and he hid, but the meanest thing that he ever did was before he left, he goes and he calls me Sue. Now, I'm thinking, he's thinking, that's all a bit of a joke. And it has got a lot of laughs from a lot of folk. It seems I've had to fight my whole life through. So, like, uh, some girl would giggle and I'd get red and some guy would laugh and I'd stick the head in him. And <clears throat> let me tell you, pal, Life is not easy if you are a boy and your name is Sue. So, I grew up quick and I grew up mean and my fists got hard and my wits got keen. However, due to the uh, somewhat narrow-minded social attitudes of the time, I also felt obliged to move from town to town to hide my shame. But I did make a vow to the moon and the stars that I would search all the honky-tonks and bars. And although I don't have much money, what I do have is a very particular set of skills. A set of skills gathered over a very long career. A set of skills that make me a nightmare for people like my dad. And I swore I would use those skills to hunt down, find and kill the man that gave me that awful name. So, it was Inverness. In mid-July, I'd just got to town and 
my throat was dry and I thought, I'm going to stop and I'm going to have myself a brew and uh, a bag of chips and um, maybe a haggis pakora. Haggis pakora is always good. And, and so in this run-down bar on a street randomly covered in mud, there at a table a dealing stud was the dirty mangy dog that called me Sue. Now, I knew this was my dear old dad from an old photograph that my mum had had. I knew him by his somewhat distinctive facial scar and his frankly disconcerting evil eye. He was tall and he was thin and he was grey and he was old and I looked at him and my blood ran cold and I said Hey pal! My name is Sue. How do you do? Now you are going to die. So I hit him hard right between the eyes. And he goes down, but to my surprise, he comes up, get this, he comes up with a knife. And, wait till I tell you this, he then cuts off a piece of my flipping ear. Right? I see. That's how it's going to be, is it? Okay. So, I smash a chair right across his teeth. And we crash through the wall right into the street. Kicking and a gouging in the mud and the blood and the beer. Now, I have to tell you, I have fought tougher men, but I must admit, I can't even really remember when. He kicked like a mule and, and he bit like a crocodile. I heard him laugh and I heard him cuss and then... He escalates things again and he goes for his gun. But, I am pleased to report, I got mine first. And he stood there looking at me and I saw him smile. And he says, son, this world is rough. And if a man's going to make it, he's got to be tough. And I knew I would not be there. To help you along. So, I gave you that name before I said goodbye. And I knew with a name like that, you'd have to get tough or die. And you must admit, it is that name that's helped to make you strong. Now, you just put up a hell of a fight. And I know you hate me. And you do have the right to kill me now. And I would not blame you if you do. But you ought to thank me before I die. For the grit in your gut and the spit in your eye. Because I am the big manky glicket bampot that called you Sue. Well, what could I do? Eh? What could I do? I got all choked up and I threw down my gun and I called him dad and he called me son and I must admit I did come away with a slightly different point of view and I still do think about him now and then, sometimes when I try and definitely when I win. And you know, if I ever have a son, 
I think I'm going to call him Hamish or Dougal or maybe something a wee bit more posh like Alistair or maybe even something like Shuggy. Basically anything but Sue. And you know why? Because I still hate this freaking name. And that's it. I hope amongst there, somewhere, you found something that you found entertaining slash amusing, or perhaps even both. So uh, I've been Brian Lynch. You've been an excellent audience for sticking it out this far. Uh, I hope whatever you are, you're well and you're safe. Um, thank you very much. It's been fun and um, I'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>